Hello, welcome. And um, so I think it's funny. I think it maybe it's because I named this one Kendra's. Oops, I named it Kendra's two three tools. Really, it's supposed to be top three tools. I'll go back and edit it later. Um, but it had me want to be like. I'm Kendra Kunoff, and today I'll be giving you my top three tools. <laughs> I always say these things a little bit tongue in cheek because everything is like, you know, the top 10 this or the three tools for this, the tricks and tips. And um, even as I was writing these down, I was realizing that they all they fit into three categories, but it's really like 10 things because. Um, Life is both simple and complex at the same time. So welcome. I love seeing your names and faces pop up. And as always, um, maybe today I have a little bit more like this like content that I wanna deliver, um, but really as always, I'm here for the conversation. So um, it delights me to no end. It makes this far more fun for me. I think it makes a much more interesting uh, live when we get to be in conversation with each other. So your questions, your comments, your shares about either how you have done this already or, you know, anyway, any response that you have or like, I think this is stupid and you should do something else. Um, all of that, hopefully you don't say that it's just like actually stupid, I'm joking, but um, I'm really here for the conversation. So please feel free to engage. Okay. So I should say up front also, I sort of like always, I, I actually really um, very specifically did not say like for the new year, um, because I, I just think like the hype around the change from December 31st to January 1st is a little odd. And um, uh, so for me, this isn't so much about like the new year and like changing everything and this, but recognizing that you know, globally and culturally and as many, many humans, there really is this sort of shift that's happening now. But I would say that I wrote that piece around like stepping into 2019 on purpose. And so, so again, on purpose first, because it's not just like the new year, rah, rah, um, but also the stepping into, like this is a journey. This is a path we're on. This is not something that changes, you know, one minute, like because the time changes one minute. This is, if this ultimately is how you step into 2019, like, you know, that'll take you into the emergence of spring, which in many ways, like to me in my own feeling sense is so much more really the quote unquote new year as like, the December, January just goes like dark, dark down into, you know, and like working these processes. And then it's actually the, you know, kind of like mid February and into March and April. And it's like, oh, like the new year is beginning. So let this all be a process. Um, and these are really powerful tools for me. Anyway, I've used them in my life. I've seen them. And I think that these, these like this is a way to focus and these as tools is really valuable. So here we go. And before I start, I'll just say one more time, um, please feel free to comment, ask questions, etc. I love the conversation. So with that said, um, number one is, so this came from a story that I heard from one of my mentors, Rich Lippin. And, um, you know, I, I don't know for certain whether this story is true or not true, but the story goes. And this is an important one to actually go through the process of it versus try to get the end result um, from hearing it. So I encourage you, whether you do it now, you won't really have time now, but to actually walk the steps of the process. So the story goes that um, Warren Buffett had a, like one of his private jet um, uh, pilots, I think, had worked for him for a very long time. And then at some point, Warren Buffett went to this, this man and said, like, hey, you know, you've, you've been employed here for a long time. Like, is this the thing you would most like to do? Or how can I help you achieve your goals? And ultimately, or he said, what do you really want to do? You know, do you really want to fly this plane? Or do you really want to, 
maybe it was a different job than airline pilot, but it was someone who had worked for him for a long time. And the guy said, oh, you know, he had all these, these different kind of dreams and visions and, um, and ideas. And so Warren Buffett said, here's what you're going to do is go, um, you know, in the next 24 hours and write like the top 25 things that you want to accomplish. Now I can't remember if it was like this year or in your life, <laughs> but let's just take the year right here. We are, we're entering December, um, you know, take this time. So this is, again, it's one of these things where you walk the steps. It's like, I encourage you to actually go later today or tomorrow and give yourself some time, right? Like your top 25 things that you would love to accomplish this year. And they can be anywhere like from a certain trip that you want to take to, you know, kind of the time you want to spend with your family to how much money you want to make or how many clients you want to have or like, but like top 25. Be like, all right, handled. Brought it back to Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett said, great. So now go take five minutes and circle your top five. And he went away and he circled like the five. It was like, oh man, these are the top five. Like if I could only do five, these would be the five. And so that's the way to look at it. When you take that list, then it's like, great. So you've got your top 25, all super important, all amazing. And then you're going to circle. You're going to be like, if I, if I had to choose, these are the five that I would choose. And then he, so he brings it back to Warren Buffett and Warren Buffett says, awesome. So how are you going to accomplish the other 20? And the guy kind of thinks, and uh, again, this is how the story goes. I don't, I don't know for sure, but he, and he says, well, so I'm going to allocate like the majority of my time to these top five and I'm going to really focus on them and I'm going to prioritize them. And then in my spare time, I'm going to work on these other 20. And Warren Buffett says, no. That other 20 things on your list, that just became your avoid at all cost list. If this top five is really the most important, then the other 20 just became your avoid at all costs list. So what, how I have found this incredibly powerful in my life is that typically, and this is why I say, you know, actually work this process versus come at it from the end and try to go backwards. Because most of us want to, like, we think we already know what our avoid at all cost list is. And we think there are things like Facebook and sugar, and they might be, we might need to avoid those as well, but that we're kind of like, okay, if I want to accomplish my goals, like these are the things that I know I need to avoid. And we kind of like put those on top rather than realizing how dissipating our energy amongst like the top 25 things and really, the things that are truly pulling us away from our top five are actually number like six, seven, and eight, even more than, you know, the, like the whole list of 20. Because when I did this process, so I heard this story from Rich, and I was like, that's amazing. And I went, this is about three years ago. And I wrote my 25 and then it really took some, like I was like circling and I was like, well, wait, wait, is that the one or is that the one? Partly because it's hard. It's hard to choose. Like all of us have a bajillion amazing ideas and like super powerful and really important. And we think we can do them all. And then I looked and it was so hard to go like, really? I have to avoid at the time, at the time, um, I wasn't in a romantic partnership. And that was actually one of my 25, but it wasn't one of the top five. And I, man, did I argue with myself about like, I can do that while I do that. Like I can totally squeeze it. in. I was like, Oh no, what would it really be like if I said, it's not that I don't want that anymore. It's not like if that dropped in my lap, it's not like I have to say, no, I can't have that. Right. Like if you had on your list, you know, earn $75,000 in 2019, and it, it wouldn't be like you have to turn money away, like, no, no, I can't get to that number. It's just that isn't your priority. It's not where you're putting your attention and, and it's like avoiding the things you think you need to do to make that happen. And instead putting all that attention on those top five. And it really was, um, it was like an intense struggle in the moment to imagine really setting that down and then it became incredibly liberating. I was like, oh, I can let go of all the like things that are going on mentally, internally, emotionally, 
maybe physically like going on a dating site or like all of that. It was just like, this is not my priority this year. It doesn't mean I can't meet and fall in love and, you know, end up in the most amazing partnership, but that's not one of my top five. And really being honest with ourselves about that. So, so that's tool number one is this, is this specific iteration of an avoid at all cost list that goes with this story about Warren Buffett and your top 25 things, choosing the top five and then making the other 20, like actually you have to be aware, right? Oh, when is my attention going to giving a little bit to that little thing? Like, oh, I could kind of make it happen. Making that your avoid at all cost list. Number two, so this is one of those ones where I ended up sticking a bunch underneath it. So I'm just gonna label number two, uh, feeling. And because there's a couple, there's three aspects to this, but to a, a, the tool, and I didn't actually say this at the beginning, but I put like a boss, like for me, that's also tongue in cheek. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> But I just like, I hate, you know, the like six for success or, you know, to have blah, blah, blah. Like I kind of makes me want to throw up in my mouth. So I put like a boss because um, at least I can laugh at it. So there's something about this idea of like stepping into 2019, like a boss really ha being empowered. And I believe that that starts with um, putting our attention actually on how we want to feel versus what we think will make us feel that way. So um, most people's New Year's Eve resolutions uh, or you know, even just goals throughout the year at any time in our life really have to do with like, I wanna make this much money, I wanna buy this thing, I wanna be in this relationship, I wanna have this baby, I wanna buy this house, I want to lose this weight, um, you know, and they, they're specific in terms of that. Very few people set intentions that are about how they want to feel. And in some way, I would say it's almost an oxymoron because if you go like, I want to feel, it's always going to be in the future. But if you set it as like a commitment versus an intention, like a goal or an intention, my commitment is around you know, feeling uh, fullness, feeling freedom, feeling joy, feeling pleasure, feeling connected or connection, um, feeling, I, I don't know, you know, you guys throw them out. Like, how do you want to feel? What is it that you think if you made the amount of money you think you want to make or you hit the number of clients you want to have or you bought the house that you want to have or the things that already you're probably percolating you lost the weight you want to lose that you're thinking like all right so this is going to be my new year's resolution like whatever those things are what is it about that like i want to feel healthy or i want to feel comfortable in my body um, i want to enjoy moving i want um i want you know, for me, there is a piece I'm, I'm putting like a strong commitment and intention and um, a lot of my like attention and intention is around buying a home. But the way that I'm working with my financial advisor around this, like how do I actually create and save and, you know, maintain and like have the money that it takes for a down payment for a house and land in the area I live? Um, and we're really looking at all the strategic pieces of that, but the primary piece we're looking at is like, how do I imagine I will feel in this space? And it really comes up like, the, is this piece of like spaciousness, boundlessness, like ease, relaxation, there's different pieces, but I'm, that's where I'm putting the majority of my attention is like, oh, that, and then that fuels everything I want to do. And it's kind of like both, like it fuels that I'm saving money in places where I've been free to spend it in the past. Um, it fuels like getting me on mint.com and like tracking my, my numbers and like having it fueled me to get on the phone with like a, an old debtor or debt anyway, where I needed to pay some debt off and like handle that. And it's like fueling me staying in contact with things that are uncomfortable for me because I'm like, but 
I can feel this. This is the feeling I want to have. And then simultaneously, I am creating that feeling. Like I'm generating that feeling in myself already. And I'm like, oh, I totally still want the house. I'm totally still doing everything I can to like at the logistical level for the house. And you know what? I already feel um, this, like the kind of feeling that I want to feel or that I imagine I will feel when my family and I move into this house. And so, you know, talk about stepping into 2019 like a boss. Like that's like, I've already won. I literally already feel the way I want to feel, even though I haven't gotten the thing yet. And that that's true freedom. That's true choice. That's like, like I, I've won 2019 and it's not even 2019 yet. <laughs> so that's where starting, first of all, starting with how do I want to feel versus going to the surface um, goal, which usually is just an underhanded way where then like if I do get, have, be, experience this thing, then I think I will feel this way. Go underneath and find what that feeling is for yourself. And then kind of like, that's like A, or that's like step one. And then like one B is begin to generate that feeling already. Find the ways that you already feel that way. Find the things that already give you that feeling. And simultaneously become more committed to that feeling than anything else. So I told my financial advisor this story. I was on line looking at clothing, like you do. And uh, kind of like put together, I was like, oh, this like outfit has like, this new pair of pants and there's like a little bustier kind of top. And then, oh my God, people, <laughs> there were sequin boots and they were like kind of rose gold. And the whole thing was just fantastic. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be fantastic. And what I was realizing is I was like generating this, these feelings I want to feel, but it was ultimately, it was going to cost like 800, between 800 and $900. And I could buy it and I would sort of have that feeling like right now while I'm looking at it or while I'm buying it. And maybe the first time it, like when it arrives and I try it on, but I really sat with like, is this, am I, am I more committed to this, like the feeling this is going to give me or the feeling of living in this home that I want? And you know, $800 doesn't go like a long way towards the down payment I need for a house, but it's a lot more than like having zero extra money <laughs> to put towards a down payment. And I just thought like, oh, this is like, um, this is a, um, what's the word, like a short-sighted, this is like a short-sighted way of me trying to generate this feeling inside myself, like I could have this thing and then I would feel, you know, pretty and spacious and free, or I could take this $800 and put it in this account and with like the, it's like the long-term commitment to not like the goal of the house, although that's true also, but more like, like, oh no, I'm committed to really feeling this way. And, um, and then the last piece I'll add, so this is like, you know, number two C or something like that. And is, is with feeling when you become committed to a feeling rather than an outcome is, and, and then you start to change your life around that is you also have to be willing to feel more and different than you have in the past, because most of us, most of our habitual actions, reactions, decisions, movements, momentums, etc. Most of them are ultimately generated by trying to stay in feeling sensation homeostasis, whatever that is for us. So some of us find homeostasis sort of in like chaos or, um, you know, a little bit of um, like fear space. Like, I don't have any money. I made a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money. I made a lot. Like what that means, we can look at the cycle and go like, wow, you're in that that ex like the, that external cycle. But if we go a little deeper than that, what we get is like, oh, your system or my system finds comfort. Like that's homeostasis for you. That's what you imagine. That's how you know how to be you is in like a boom or bust and a kind of anxiety and creation. And are you willing to feel, you know, what might feel like boredom or unknown or uncertainty? Um, 
discomfort, like for all of us, this is going to be a little different, but what is our, what is our homeostasis? And as we start to become committed to creating a certain kind of feeling field within and around us, it's guaranteed to change our world. And then we will feel more and different than we are used to. So, you know, underneath that, again, there's like endless tips and trips, tricks and practices that can help build your nervous system so that you're actually prepared to feel more and different than you traditionally have or that you're used to. But so number one is the specific iteration I talked about with avoid at all cost list. And number two is around feeling, becoming committed to a feeling, devoted to it. I'll pause before I go to number three. Um, Eric said, this is how manifestation has been explained to me. And Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about the experiencing the feeling, how it will be after you already have what you are manifesting. Yeah, I mean, I've heard that brought in a lot of different ways. And honestly, the way that works best for me is the recognition that I actually, not I'm in control, but like I'm actually a choice around what I'm experiencing all the time. And, and it becomes less about like the manifestation of like, oh, then you become magnetic to the thing you want and you can't help but to receive it. Like maybe, maybe that's true. Um, but kind of more to the point, like in this moment, I'm happier. And that like, to me, this is the actual end goal. It's like, oh, I actually, I have choice around how I feel and respond and move through the world to step into the world. And then already I'm like, oh, I'm already living the life experience that I want to be living. Nothing more needed. And that includes, you know, like I want a house that I don't have yet. So, um, so I think, you know, it's like both are true and they can really, they can coexist and some work very well for some. And, but, um, so number three <laughs> is number three tool for stepping into 2019 like a boss is this idea or this kind of concept I talk about, which has to do with transmitting who you are. And there's a lot of layers to this. Like, first of all, like, who are you? Who am I? You know, it's like, do I have to know that or figure that out? Um, and there is an element that some of that has to do with like actually getting deeply connected deeply enough to yourself that you do know what that is. But the transmitting you is, it's all, it, I mean, and it's in its broadest sense, first of all, is that it's recognizing that you're always transmitting something. I absolutely believe like everything in the universe is made of energy and some energy is more like manifest in form than other, right? And our, our physical being has a fairly strong like form manifestation, but it's, it's all energy. And we know that something like 75% of communication is nonverbal. And I don't believe that that's just like, you know, quote unquote body language. That's it. it, it we have, it just, it's because our being transmits. And then it's how consciously do I want to, am I willing to transmit the truth of who I am? And some of that can come in the form of, you know, like, you know, start making Facebook lives and literally like transmit the being and the belief and the sound current of you, like, like transmit it. Let it be felt and heard and seen in the world. Um, but it can also be, literally you know like like how you dress yourself every day that that come from the inside out that it come from again it can be this it's not just like you know how do i feel like dressing today like i want sweats and a t-shirt that might be you know it might be true some days but it can also be like gosh how, what how do i want to transmit today and that's very different than like i have to wear a suit and tie because the quote unquote over culture 
whether that's the overculture of your company, the overculture of the city you live in, the overculture of Western America, you know, like white America, whatever you consider to be the overculture says, I have to wear a suit and tie. It's something on the inside of you that says like, and this is how I will transmit me today, which might be a suit and a tie. It might be, you know, like a suit and a tie, but like bright orange socks. It might be, you know, it's like finding like, how do I, how do I actually transmit the truth of who I am? And there's a, there's like a, it's not a caveat. It's like something that sits right beside it. I wrote myself this note in the shower this morning that was, that said, um, don't require anyone else to change in order for you to transmit you. Now, that doesn't mean like, you know, don't pay attention to your impact. You know, if you're like on a street corner with a megaphone and people are like, ah, you know, I mean, have a little awareness and consideration for, you know, how you're transmitting yourself over a megaphone. Um, but again, like this idea of like, well, you know, people will look at me funny if I wear that. Like, that's you deciding you're unwilling to feel how you feel when you think people are looking at you funny because you're wearing something. That's not about that they're looking at you funny. That's about your unwillingness to be inside your own experience, like whatever that is, when you think people are looking at you funny because you're wearing something. And so this is a willing, all of these, none of these are, none of these are easy. They're simple. They're simple, but they're not easy. They take something. And so it is a commitment. But it's sort of not just like, well, I guess I'm just going to take whatever 2019 brings me. It's sort of like, no, I'm actually willing to take steps for that. And, and the things that I'm offering are very different than like, you know, the 17 plan, you know, system for success or this thing. But the willing, like, are you willing to be with the intensity of feeling inside your own being when you begin to transmit you? more consciously and more truthfully and more clearly and then be actually be willing like so what people look at you funny so what even if somebody you know says like well those are weird shoes like you don't need to be in reaction to it either be like really you think these are like funny looking i love them right it's not like oh you know you know you're harshing my mellow <laughs> um but there is a little bit of like so who cares who cares if somebody doesn't like that you, then you're not the transmission for them. And that is okay. Like you don't need to be the transmission for every single human being on the planet. And oh my God, you don't want to be like, how exhausting would that be? But you can be the right transmission for the right people. But that comes with a willingness to, to actually be who you are and transmit who you really are which might be, you know, it's like your, your own unique blend of um, scientific, spiritual, earth-loving, Christian, you know, or like, like, or, you know, you want to, you, you wear very conservative clothes, but you dye your hair pink, or you, like, it's like this, it's like whatever is truly that thing. I remember actually when I was, um, probably about 21 years old and I was living in San Francisco and I rode tra public transportation everywhere. I probably was like 22 actually at this point because I was a nanny and I used to take the bus from the mission up to like the hate where my nanny job was and I would knit. We did, I don't think we had, we didn't, we had cell phones, but we didn't have iPhones, right? So it wasn't sort of like, I couldn't have had an iPhone, but I knit, I knit all the time. And I had um, bright pink hair and I wore very, very bright clothes. But I remember this um, like kind of old, older, she seemed very old. Maybe she was in her 60s, something like this, but like Latina woman um, sitting down next to me and, and sort of, she didn't speak a lot of English. I didn't speak hardly any Spanish, but having a bit of a conversation about my knitting. And, and so this transmission has, it, it's, it's on so many levels. Like, I wasn't trying to make myself accessible to people to come and sit next to by making sure that my, you know, nothing about me was off-putting. But at the same time, the transmission of me 
at that time, and it's sort of this, you know, it's honestly, it's a wish that I have in general is like, I never want my, the transmission of my being to be off putting. And I think that was felt, you know, so this woman who in, you know, in all likelihood, we had like nothing in common, but she felt comfortable approaching me to talk about knitting. And, and again, that's the disparate realms, right? Like, there's me with my bright pink hair, and I have this like Kelly green coat and these orange pants and like this thing. And then, and then I was like knitting. Um, oh, thank you for all the hearts. <laughs> they make me so happy. So it's allowing for all the quirks, but the only person who can, I mean, yes, other people can welcome and accept and allow for your quirks, but really the main person who needs to do that is you the main person. And that allows you to like actually, transmit who you are because you say yes I say yes to exactly like who I am including all the ways that I want to grow and transform and learn and you know become better but I transmit the truth of who I am because I am a yes to the truth of who I am and honestly I really believe if you go through the process of you know like what are your top 25 from that, what are the five? And then those other 20 become avoided all costs. And again, it's just for like a year. It's not like forever, but go like, okay, for a year, avoid at all costs. If you do that, if you put your primary attention, intention, and commitment on how do I want to feel? And you can always start with this idea of like, what are these things I think I want? Like, well, why do I want them? Like, what is it I think they're going to get me? And ultimately come down to this place of like, this is how I want to feel. And actually, I'm committed to that no matter what. And being willing to generate that feeling for yourself. What does it take to actually generate that feeling without anything else needing to come and change to make it so? That's number two. And number three, both getting in touch with the truth of who you are, being enough of a yes to it, and then the willingness, it's vulnerable. It's not just vulnerable to tell, you know, stories about having embarrassed yourself. It's vulnerable to transmit the truth of who you are in your, uh, you know, in, in your shadow, in, you know, your, your pain, and also in your glory and in your strength and in your quirkiness and in your beauty and in your creativity and in the you know, one unique thread of your particular message, like transmit it. So I put it on here, I said, transmit you daily. I mean, honestly, I think if you did that one time a day, if you made one decision a day that was like, this is me, I'm putting me into the world, it would change your life and you'd step into 2019 like a boss. But it can also be like this, you know, it can be moment to moment, experience yourself like a satellite dish and be like, I, like I'm, I'm transmitting myself into the world. And you, you just can't fail. You can't fail. So um, thank you, Marianne and Eric. I'm so glad that this resonates. And um, I don't know if there's anyone else on here who has anything that you either want to share or any questions you want to ask, clarifying questions, um, or how does this apply to this particular aspect of my life, or um, I'll be here for, maybe I'll stay on for another like three to five minutes and just, you know, look awkwardly at you. <laughs> um, but the truth is that the reason you can't fail is because if you do these three things, you will have already succeeded beyond the acquiring or the experiencing or the, you know, even manifesting of, right? Like, like you, you will already have succeeded beyond the specifics of anything you could say that you want or need in order to succeed. If you actually do this, like you, you, you're just living your life as having succeeded already and everything else Every, it, everything else is like miraculous. Everything else is miraculous. So 
Um, you're so welcome, Eric. I'm so glad that you appreciated it. It's very rewarding when people like what I have to say. <laughs> um, well, I will close out here for today. And um, again, as always, if you're watching the replay, please also include your comments and I'll always come back and happy to engage the conversation. And um, I just wish you, you know, really everything that you most deeply desire. Um, and I wish you a really wonderful, like December, the darkening of the year for actually it's not true for everybody. Um, but here in the Northern hemisphere that's happening. And I think it's a beautiful time. So I hope you enjoy it. Ciao.